A week ago, I was in Marathwada in Maharashtra, which has been hit by the worst drought India has, the state especially, has ever seen. Till date, 1,027 farmers have committed suicide there, and this is the largest, largest number for that region in, in recorded history of Marathwada. There is no water. Farming has absolutely disappeared almost. Whatever they grow is not growing because this is the second consecutive drought in a drought prone region. And from there I was asked to go to a flood hit area and that's Chennai. From too little water to way too much. Is India really preparing itself properly? States, are they serious enough to tackle with seriousness the issues regarding water? To my mind, India's got adequate water. It's the management of water which is critical. And management of water is a function of our ability to do, to manage every drop of water in India. And every drop of water, I mean good rainwater harvesting, our ability to treat every drop of wastewater, our ability to recycle every drop of drainage water, and our ability, to my mind, is very, very critical do in coastal areas desalination of water simply because of evolution of technology. That's on this side, but on, on the pricing side, to my mind, and I've been a long time believer, uh, we must understand in India that we, 82% of our water goes into agriculture, and we are providing excessive degree of water into agriculture. And countries across the world, Korea, Australia, New Zealand, they've demonstrated across that you can enhance production, you can enhance productivity in agriculture by doing a much better and much more optimum management of water. And this is happening because we do not know the value of pricing water. We are giving water free of cost to everybody. It's an economic commodity. It must be priced. People must know the value of water. What would your argument be for either side of the debate? Well, the tragedy right now is that the poor pay for water at a higher level than those that can afford to pay. So the price for non-delivery is very, very high. And I think that the inequity of it is something that needs to be sorted through. If you look at the equation of water in terms of where, how and when, and then begin to look at smart grids for water, and I'm delighted to learn that we actually have now uh, more than an experiment, smart grids being put into place in some of the South Delhi uh, colonies, which will show us the way. All that has happened is the efficiency of billing and the ability to understand how that water is delivered and when that water is drawn is enabling us to maintain the price of water but ensure that the revenues go up. The technologies exist. We have to ensure that we use them for free and fair delivery, which ensures right price, right cost, right delivery. So I would just add here, uh, in an area which is to do with financing, uh, being close to my heart, is the ability to finance projects depends on projects themselves being financeable. How do you create a financeable project? You create it by proper architecture, ensuring that the off-taker, which is often the municipality itself, is a financeable uh, solution. And hence the PPP models, the ability to get the private sector in become very important to ensure that we can finance for all of these solutions which are staring us in the face and which we have to adopt, adapt and use to our uh, best that ability. That private player, one of them of course is uh, Mr. Lakhani. So tell us your experience. Are people willing to pay? Are they willing to pay only this much? What do they want as far as quality is concerned? And what have your experiences on the ground been in Nagpur? Point is, we need technology. We, need, we have only hardly 4% metering in our country. So unless we meter it, we really don't know whether, where this water is going. We have like 50% plus non-revenue water, as we call it, that water which is not traced. We have put it into the system. It is not built. It doesn't come back as a revenue. So 50% plus non-revenue water, the main, you know, to add to it 4% metering and low tariffs. 
creates a negative cycle. You know, to, to break this, we need, like, like then in Nagpur, it's a 2.7 million population city. It's the whole city 24 by 7 water program we are running now for three and a half years. The, the, uh, the aim is to rehabilitate, to invest money. You need a capex to rehabilitate the system, to meter it 100% and also have an O&M uh, component of 25 years. So there is a skin in the game and accountability. See, in, in Nagpur, the tariff and fees are delinked. So ta you see, tariff is a socio-political issue. It needs to be decided by the elected people. You know. But the fees being separate is, is a continuous process. And it's a performance-based contract. I would like to share with you that the economically weaker section, we, we found that 85% of them are paying without follow. We were surprised. But when we checked it, we came to know that husband and wife both work. Earlier, they were spending half a day on the public tap. Now that they are adding that much more value to, you know, to their kitty, water bill is peanuts for them. So there is also a revelation. The willingness to pay is there if we provide good services. Maybe willingness to charge is a, is a challenge in many of these places. Suresh, you had some thoughts on this uh, water pricing. If, can people be convinced, that is, and politicians especially, you know, it has to be depoliticized, but ultimately these decisions are politicians take. There may be a solution which lies within the city. You know, for instance, you know, uh, like Mr. Kant said, you know, the, uh, rainwater harvesting is a good solution. I'm talking about not rooftop water harvesting, but wetlands in itself. And there are many places in India which are still dependent on wetland system for their water supply. Can we look at hybrid solutions? We need centralized solutions. Can we bring in decentralization as well? Close the loop. Integrated urban water management, demand management, water supply side solutions, and you know, closing the loop in terms of recycling and reuse. Now, where we are lagging behind today is, and that's an area of work for us, is to create that enabling environment. One of the indicators that we may want to look at in terms of smart cities is how much ecological footprint reduction is happening, you know, how much the city has reduced its impact on the rivers or the wetlands. But let me tell you, what cannot be measured cannot be controlled. It's as simple as that. So for example, we have to look at a smart grid solution even for smart water and it starts from generation to transmission to distribution. And, and the good news here is that the cost of these IoT technologies for a project which is say a thousand crores would be just five to seven percent. So I think it's no rocket science. If you look at the ROI, return of investment and life cycle analysis of these projects, then India deserves better water solutions and it can be created. So technology can be used to, you know, provide a sustainable water supply which is cost effective and also user friendly and consumer friendly because I think that's what India deserves. Mr. Kant, are the, uh, if the costs are not prohibitive, then the Singapore model where we have seen they, you know, they have changed the entire face of Singapore in the last so many years, desalinate, started desalinating water or the sea water, then what is stopping, you know, our municipalities for example, you know, and it should be more community oriented as you are saying. Uh, so, you know, on the water side, uh, you can't have one solution. You know, I mean, Singapore had a challenge. And the challenge was that the water agreement with M Malaysia was coming to an end. They were going to have no water. So you were facing this absolute scarcity. And when you face that adversity, you spur innovation. And therefore, they did several things. They had a dual piping system. They said every drop of drainage water will be treated. And they then went in for vast rainwater harvesting. India is very different from Singapore. We are much larger, much bigger. And therefore, you need a, 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 another approach to my mind, and which is very critical, that in rural areas, the answer lies in community programs. A huge number of community programs where community owns water resources. Answer just doesn't lie in urban cities, yes pipes and fixing your leakages, getting your meters right, using technology uh, to innovate, all that is critical. But in rural areas, community management of water is a very, very important thing. A bunch of us have come behind forming the India Sanitation Coalition, which has civil society, it has uh, corporates, and it has donor agencies, multilaterals, all players coming together onto a same platform so that there can be common knowledge, common sharing, and common policy making. And I think we have lacked this, and therefore we get into situations where people come up against each other, because understanding of each other's perspectives isn't there. 
and back to price of water if the engagement and understanding is there, whether it is in sanitation or in supply of water, we need more forums such as this where we can document best practice, we can disseminate best practice and we can agree what is best practice.